two and a half, three years ago, I arrived in Bristol and found just this incredible, amazing, environmentally aware and active community. And, you know, I'm just incredibly grateful that so many of you have come along today, people who I've met in the last couple of years, and that I'm in a community that is so active. We're looking at a future without much oil, without fossil fuels, with too much carbon in the atmosphere, and already seeing it is possible. And that's the point. The point of today is to say, uh, for me, was to explore that question. And how better to explore that question by bringing in all the people who I thought could give the answers and having a room full of us to discuss it. Because that big picture of the world and Britain and Bristol, and you can't do it without them, I see it the other way round, which is that if we could do it in Bristol, then that might help inspire Britain to do it and that might help inspire the rest of the world. And I think that's the point, that, that, that if we can uh, create examples in our community of getting it right. And wouldn't it be nice if we could do it in a you know, fairly um, elegant way? So we've got a website. Um, this event started to be planned only three months ago and I came back from Germany and said, I met some people who say Copenhagen's going to aim for 80% emission reduction. And, uh, you know, Bristol's aiming for 40%, but how are we going to be green capital if Copenhagen gets there first? You know, could we go for 100%? Could we go for ze zero carbon Bristol? And we're sitting in the table in the canteen, which many of you know, and Steve said, our carbon model doesn't allow for getting down to 80% even. And I said, well, does it allow for the countryside? Does it allow for carbon sequestration? And the answer was, well, not yet. So, right, could we build that in? And we had Simon and Bev at the table. And so we started to think about what we could do. And this is where I found myself in Bristol. Only a few months ago, we were looking at the opportunities from introducing the green economy. And this is Bristol coming seventh in the European Green Capital competition out of eight. And the reason that Munich is there, which is came 11th, is because uh, I got invited to Munich to speak about European green capitals, so I had to include them. But Bristol, Bristol came seventh, and the point is there are lots of people in the world who look to Bristol to innovate. You know, and Bristol's got a fantastic tradition of innovation, from industrializing the slave trade to realizing that that was possibly going in the wrong direction and then eliminating the slave trade, and all the way through to the present day. It's a very, very innovative city, and others are looking to us and already coming to us informally or formally and saying, can you help us? And they're coming to Bristol because it's a green capital in the UK. And they're coming to the UK because we speak English. And you can say, well, look, Hanover actually came first and they speak English just as well as we do. And they say, yeah, but you're British. So it's sort of, uh, you know, it's sl slightly incumbent on us to come up with the solutions pretty damn quick before we teach other people how to do it. And uh, when I arrived in Bristol, we were in the middle of a dialogue process, world cafes and so on, around developing a sustainable plan for Bristol. Bristol entered the competition and we came up with a vision of Bristol in the world. And that's the two-page version of it, which has been a little sort of Bible for the, the Green Capital Group. Uh, it's very simple and it's very clear. Um, we're looking at the community itself, transport, economy, food, buildings, energy and so on. And the idea, one of, one of the ideas in the Bristol Green Capital Momentum Group was to revisit this and look at the vision, um, which is what we're doing today. Can we raise our game? So we have this amazing community where we can, and I, I just one day sat and doodled, who are all the groups? We've got a royal flush of NGOs with skills, the Center for Sustainable Energy, we've got Forum for the Future, Soil Association, Schumacher Institute, many of these based in Bristol. We've got a fabulous collection of groups engaging with the citizens, including the only, you know, uh, uh, Jewish, a uh, Palestinian, Jew Jewish Arab radio station in the world, Salam Shalom Radio. You know, Bristol's just got the most, the most unusual and interesting collection of groups. We've got fabulous groups in the council. The council's sponsoring the Partnership for Consultation, the Green Capital Group, and an amazing collection of businesses, all of whom consider themselves to be engaged in environmental change. And this is just, that's just a handful, a selection. If yours isn't there, you know, don't beat me up. I'm really sorry. 
And the point is the Green Capital Momentum Group has the possibility to bring all of these together. And in this room today, we've got people from universities, the council, the businesses, environmental activists. We've got a subsection of the whole community here. Uh, and we can sit and plan what we want for our sustainable community. Last year, we came up with the peak oil report. This was a first, uh, out of which came a whole slew of projects to implement parts of it some of which are coming together, some of which haven't come together. And the first thing was somebody saying, so how do you like a palm oil power plant at Avonmouth? And we sort of said, it's sort of going slightly in the wrong direction, actually. And the protest is, uh, you know, the, the planning inquiry is coming up. But the city responded to the peak oil report by saying we want to reduce emissions 40% by 2020. T two minutes, can we do it? Yes, we can. 100% renewables by 2020, and we want to increase tree cover to 30%. I just did some really quick back of the envelope calculations and what that could mean. And my back of the envelope calculation said 1.6 plus 1.77 plus 0.97, 4 million tons, and at an average 10 tons per person for 400,000 people, you've done it. So it's possible to have a zero carbon Bristol. What would it take, and this is what today is about, it would take bringing together the city with the surrounding agricultural land, bringing together agriculture and forestry, uh, and we would need to put more people on the land as we replace it with machines and we would need to bring some of our agriculture into the city as well. So that's why we've got today to talk about these things and just very quickly um, bringing in key speakers who've got an idea of how you can get to a zero carbon Britain which we've just had which is great and then how you could have 100% renewable energy if you're a city, which is going to be Herbie after the break. Uh, it, it, just incredible to find that these reports are already there, and I thought it would be great if we brought all this together in one day as soon as possible and thought about it. Royal Agricultural College are looking at uh, a farm of the future, centre for farming of the future, so we can look at this. And interestingly, I'd just come back from the Global Eco Village Network, who have the skills to learn how to create new communities in the countryside. And that's why we've got Kosha with us today. And Kosha and Vala are both, and, and these, are, these are the kind of my icons, that there are books that say we are moving towards a tipping point. We've got great people, uh, a community that are unresting with the wisdom of crowds. We're heading towards a tipping point and we can create social enterprises that create a fairer society we're shifting from countries run by multinationals to rip consumers off to cities working with their citizens to create a green economy and I think this is what the opportunity is for Bristol. Thank you.